of stuff. You know, I'm Henry. I do vocals in the band Cognizant. I'm uh, Alex Bailey. We're uh, in Leeds in England right now. Okay, man, we're up in Newcastle. I'm Phil. I play bass in Cognizant. I'm Al Levin. We're at my studio in Orlando, Florida. My name is Alex Rudinger, which is in the United States southern portion. This is Frank from Suffocation, we're at Full Force Studios here in New York. This is Jason Sukop from Audio Hammer Studios. We're recording a couple of new songs for the new Cognizance release. We're in Newcastle, uh, the bass player's house, Phil, and we're recording bass and vocals here. Been recording two tracks with Ale Levy, and uh, we're just getting on with uh, <laughs> talking shit, basically. And I'm tracking drums for Cognizance, which is a band from the UK. And it's pretty ripping death metal drumming stuff. So that's about where we're at. side of the world but at this point I've actually done it quite a lot pretty much all the bands I've been in uh, 
vary in location. The first band I played in was from Canada. The next band I played in was from the UK, actually. And The Faceless and Conquering Dystopia were split up all around the United States, West Coast and East Coast. So I'm actually pretty used to working in that way, having riffs and ideas sent to me and then composing parts for them and sending them back and getting approval and that sort of thing. When they ready to track the drums, I'll send over some like scratch guitar tracks and they'll uh, track the drums uh, to the scratch tracks. Uh, the first CD, which was Inquisition, Alex Ruding had tracked the four songs at his studio over in Maryland. And on the second release, Romain Goulon tracked drums at his home studio in France. In working with the different drummers, you know, obviously the two of them, uh, Romain's an incredible drummer, and Ruding is a great drummer, but uh, Ruding is a machine. Alex Rudinger is one of the top three metal drummers I've ever worked with, and I've worked with a bunch of them. He's absolutely phenomenal, and I realized that since I'm in a video, you're probably expecting me to praise whoever I'm talking about, but the praise is real. Still haven't spoken to the dude, so it's one of those, it's funny. I'm sure he's a real cool guy. <laughs> I look forward to speaking to him, but it's one of those, man. I mean, it's, you just get on. It, it, you, you do your part and you rely that everyone else is gonna do their part too, and it comes together, hopefully. And I think it does for this, definitely. Romain Galan's a phenomenal drummer. He played on the last release Cognizance had. Um, I think he's kind of more cut out for the super fast stuff than I am. He's kind of got a more traditional death metal style and I really like the stuff he wrote. Stylistically, um, it's hard to say how it's really different. This stuff's really fast still, but I'd say there's less super fast, constant stuff. It's a bit more broken up and diversified to kind of suit my style of playing. Um, there's a little bit more room to breathe and uh, I kind of just tried to make the fills as interesting as possible uh, given that this is like a death metal context, you know. I feel that a lot of the times in death metal it's the same fast double bass, fast hand, single stroke fills. Uh, so I, I try to do something a little bit different and I try to bring a different element to the table. Um, I think Romain's absolutely amazing and he did a great job on their, their last EP. So I just tried to keep that style but kind of give it my own twist at the same time. And like as well as he, he plays death metal, he kind of integrates all these different styles and he manages to put all these different styles of metal within his own work so well, it gives so many different elements to the songs. I don't know. Yeah, that dry dick snare roll. The guy tracks everything in very, very few takes, and out of those few takes, barely any edits ever needed. What's really, really cool about this is that what he played is what actually made it to the mix, which is actually kind of rare these days. But on top of that, he's super professional. The first EP I did with the band, which was called Inquisition, I recorded out of my home studio. Um, I liked doing that, but it was a little bit more stressful doing it all by myself. Um, so this time was definitely more enjoyable, being able to come down and actually track the drums with A.O.L. And, and do all that uh, was a lot more enjoyable and obviously this room sounds phenomenal so it was more satisfying to do. A.O.L. Levy here, also known as the Big Strauss. The dude, uh, you know, unstoppable killing machine, I think his Instagram name is. He's an unstoppable fucking killing machine, you know? <laughs> it's super refreshing working with Cognizance because they keep it real as far as death metal is concerned, and that's actually kind of rare these days, except for when old school bands come around. Uh, there's no, there are no breakdowns or any sort of, I guess, even inkling of core in there, but somehow it manages to sound modern up to date and cutting edge, so what else could you ask for if you feel like uh, listening to death metal, they're kind of doing it right. I've learned a lot from working with him, like about about guitar tone mainly, like the things he's shown me in terms of technique and how to get a certain sound has been incredible. We did a shootout, and that's that's what's important. We tried out every single guitar that was there uh, against each other and pick the one that sounded the sickest for rhythms. That's kind of the process that normally takes place. I love PRS guitars and I love Ivan's guitars, but I, I feel like what makes PRS a perfect choice for certain kinds of leads is what makes it a less than ideal choice for rhythms. 
and vice versa with the, a lot of Ibanez guitars. Even though some of them do sound great on leads, like my Iceman, that's actually a pretty common decision if, I, if I'm faced with the Ibanez and a PRS. It's been a real relaxed environment, like usually it's me and Henry that recall everything besides the drums and we get stressed with each other a lot. We can be kind of lazy. Yeah, you know, we ain't, we ain't no great engineers or anything, so you know, it's pretty, pretty nerve wracking, but uh, actually working with them in person has been incredible. We're not the most knowledgeable guys in the recording field, so it's pretty tricky, but this time, like, being prepared in terms of practicing and uh, knowing what we needed to do for the recording process, has made it a lot easier because we also don't have to worry about recording ourselves. I came in decently prepared also, which definitely helps. I did my best and strive to improve myself to be prepared for this, and I think uh, both of the, the other lads did that as well, you know what I mean? We've been prepared for months and hopefully it pays off and comes out with a good product. So what would it take for me to get knighted? Well. Serious. Let's talk. You're not British citizens. Let's so talk some like, serious shit. You're not British citizens, so I don't feel like you should have to answer that question. You know, that's let's uh, talk. Let's that's talk. a clandestine operation that you don't need to know anything about. What would it? You got to do a fair bit for charity, I assume. You know Richard Branson. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's been knighted. You know. He he, has. He's just a businessman, and you know yourself as a businessman, so. Uh, yeah, we're about the same. Yeah. But the next move for you as a as a friend, I'm going to tell you. I think you should just wear suits at all times. Recording session, suit. Bedtime, suit. I don't think Paul McCartney wore a suit all the time. I mean, look at all that work that McCartney had put in. You know, he wrote a couple of songs, and then uh, one thing led to another. But Branson smokes weed, he's gonna go out into space with Virgin. You know, do you want to be that guy, or do you want to be McCartney? McCartney's a bit of a crumpet, but <laughs> Branson's a scon, so what, what would you rather be, a scon or a crumpet? A scon. Yeah, so you want to be Branson. Um, he's pretty much all we got, yeah, we <laughs> we don't really have much over here, um, so we got to take whatever we can. So yeah, Branson's pretty thick sauce. So I think we should wrap this session up and go get some suits. Does, I don't think Branson wears suits everywhere. It, okay. Yeah, I'd, I would much rather be a scon.
It says scones, right? He, I was trying to pronounce scone or scone, like, I think it's scone, but I, I'm not sure. Man, they, they've got a lot of names for bread products that don't have any taste to them. Crumpet Town's a place we all go, you know, when it's, we just want to get away from the stress of modern life. Yep. Just cut everything's made out of fucking crumpets. There's, there's raisins that make the pops, the rocks, you know. The, the what? There's a language barrier because us Americans don't speak English right. The pops. What the hell are pops? Pop. The parks, okay. Pop. No, P-A-T-H. Oh, the pop. The, the, the pop. The pop. The pop. It's a pop. <laughs> like, it's, it's fucking tight, it's fucking insane. There is no budget in it, but this guy, this guy's going for a party. We should have a, a party. A party. A party. I don't always understand what they're saying. It's a fucking party, mate. You know, party and potty. <laughs> I don't know, they've got different, uh, different ways of being, but I, I like it. I like England. I like British people. They're funny, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Cognizance as a studio project is awesome. I really enjoy working with these guys and writing their stuff, uh, on drums anyway. And uh, there have been talks and ideas of us doing it live at some point. Uh, yeah, that's definitely something we're looking towards. I don't know what the other guys have said, but... Uh... Live situation is a, is a total different kettle of fish. You know what I mean? It's, that's the fun, that's the... The real, the real rewarding part for us, I guess. It's something that we've always wanted to do, but logistically, it's a bit of a nightmare. You don't just find dudes who can handle this kind of material in local scenes. It makes it really, really tough. I went through the same thing 10 years ago when I was putting Doth together. It was really, really close to impossible to find players, and I had to import them from all over the place. Um, I guess there are certain logistical issues with the fact, uh, you know, being that I'm here in the U.S. and there in the U.K. I, Alex Rudinger has said that he's, he's wanting to do the live thing as well, which is great. But uh, I think that kind of thing could be worked out, and if it was the right gig, uh, it, would all, it would be awesome to do this stuff live. It's something that's definitely on the cards that's hopefully going to be happening pretty soon. It's something that I think we need to do, and we will do. Hopefully I'm not the only one that's saying that, but... Uh... If they keep the standards up and do come out with a lineup that can actually handle this stuff, like, you know, if uh, Alex decides to play live with them, or they get someone of Alex's uh, level, which is kind of hard to do, but you know, I'm sure there's a guy out there. If they keep quality control alive and well when approaching the live show, I think this stuff will go over great. It'll, it'll sound tight as hell and fucking awesome. We're hoping to shoot our first music video as well, and alongside this, I'm already writing plenty of material. Um, whether we're gonna record a full length straight away or not, I'm, I'm not too sure. But we're writing all the time, so we're just going to keep writing new songs and we're going to hopefully take the project live. I just want to say, you know, big thanks to, to Al, big thanks to, to you, Tommy, you know, you've been an awesome guy. It's been an awesome experience, I've learned a lot. Um, and we're going to bring out a real quality product thanks to these guys' hard work, so I'm pumped on that. Big thanks to everyone who supported it and checked it out and passed it around to their friends, you know, that's what we need. I want to thank all the fans out there because uh, you guys give us the inspiration to keep writing music and keep putting it out there for y'all. So thanks for that. We'll keep trying to give back everything we can. You know, um, you know, we'll keep trying to fund stuff ourselves and uh, you know, bringing stuff to you guys as quick as we can. See ya. Um. I just want to also say that Henry Price is a, uh, that guy's a slippery turd, so you, you better watch yourself. The final thought is that that dude's pretty fucking weird, but uh, he, he writes a mean fucking riff. But aside from that, uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.